for joining us. I'm Joshua Berry. And I'm Katie Cox. Imagine being offered a scholarship to a college only to be later told you might not get it. That's what's happening to students who apply for scholarships at Arkansas Tech in Russellville. Officials there have had to trim the number of scholarships granted to comply with a new state law. Students are now on a waiting list because of the law. So the says amount of scholarships already granted to students won't be touched. More students are going to college. That's according to the Arkansas Higher Education Department. They reported fall enrollment was up 6.2% from a year ago. That means about 10,000 more students are attending the state's 33 public and 11 private colleges and universities. Education officials say unemployed workers going back to school is attributed to the increase. There's a new name for a center in Arkadelphia established to promote job growth. The Southwest Arkansas Technology Center is now the Community Education Center and it's operated by Henderson State University. The center trains job seekers to be ready to go to work at many area industries. By keeping a steady base of available workers, officials hope to promote economic growth in Clark County. The center is located on 6th Street in Arkadelphia. The winter storm that prompted campus to close early last Friday is responsible for record-breaking snow in the state. While it was mostly sleet and rain in Arkadelphia, the town of Gilbert and Searcy County saw their snowiest month in over 80 years. The area saw 16.5 inches of snow in January. Last month was also one of January's snowiest months on record in 10 other Arkansas cities. Three lawmakers are trying to put the brakes on legislation that would close a piece of Arkansas to off-road vehicles. Senators Blanche Lincoln and Mark Pryor, along with Representative Mike Ross, say a plan to close areas of the Washita National Forest near Hot Springs would hurt the economy of the area. The forest covers 1.8 million acres in the state. Students have realized that the hand sanitizers that were implemented last semester are still in place this semester. Is that because Henderson administration still has fear of the swine flu? HTV reporter Kyle Striplin discovers the reasoning behind the ongoing use of the hand san sanitizer stations. According to Renee Caldwell, an APN at the Health Services, Henderson State University administration had supplied hand sanitizing gels on various campus sites in response to the 2009 CDC guidelines. The guidelines from the CDC, or Center for Disease Control, encourage hand hygiene for all persons who are well and those that have the symptoms of the flu. The CDC recommends the use of alcohol-based hand sanitizing gels when soap and water are not available. The alcohol found in these sanitizers break down the germ's cell structure, which kills the virus. The CDC posted these everyday steps on their website to prevent you yourself from catching the swine flu. Wash your hands often with soap and water. If soap and water is not available, then use the alcohol-based hand rubs, such as Germex or Perel. This is Kyle Striplin with HTV. If you're going to the Arkansas State Fair next year, you might have longer to drive. The group in charge of the fair is looking to move in a new location. The list of proposed sites are now at four. Two in North Little Rock, one in Jacksonville, and the current location in Little Rock. Fair officials say a lack of space and safety of the current fairgrounds location led to talks about moving. Three suspects on the run from police for more than a day are behind bars. The three juveniles are accused of beating a guard to death and injuring another. They escaped from the Jefferson County Juvenile Detention Center in Pine Bluff last Saturday night. Two of the suspects were caught in Fort Smith Sunday night. The third was found in Oklahoma Monday morning. 2010 marks the 15th anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing and a Central Arkansas landmark is planning a new exhibit on the attack. The exhibit at the Clinton Presidential Library will focus on former President Clinton's role after the 1995 bombing of the federal building. The exhibit will include photos, videos, and artifacts from the attack. It's expected to open March 1st. Gamblers in the state now have a new game to play. Mega Millions debut January 31st. It's a multi-state draw game similar to Powerball, already offered at lottery retailers. Jackpot drawings for Mega Millions are Tuesday and Friday nights at 10 o'clock. Coming up on HTV News, a program geared toward grade school students in Arkadelphia is underway. You'll find out if there's still time to enroll a little later.
program for budding artists has started at Henderson. It's called Art Lab, and registration is still underway. Students in kindergarten through 12th grade can attend classes featuring a variety of art techniques. Classes start at February 1st and continue for up to eight weeks. Students in 6th through 12th grades can choose from drawing, digital techniques, printmaking, ceramics, painting, and sculpture. For more information, head to hsu.edu. The state's budget for public institutions keeps getting cut. HTV reporter Brittany Dory will tell you what this means for Henderson campus. With a struggling economy, we all have to take a closer look at our budget. With over $868,000 in budget cuts, Henderson is no different. As a student or faculty member, how will this affect you? We talked with Professor of Art Beverly Buys about how she plans to compensate for the cutbacks in her department. We, we're all in it together. Everybody knows that they can't order any extra fun things that we might like to have for our classes. It, it's pretty much the basic needs. That, that's what is being provided for us. Um, we're kind of using up materials that uh, we have on hand that maybe we would have sat on a little bit longer. We spoke with Vice President for Finance and Administration, Bobby Jones, for more insight. You know, anytime you have budget cuts, you, you worry about the fact, are you uh, diminishing the, the quality of education the students get on campus? And that is one of our main goals in cutting budgets. We try not to affect the education that the students are getting. And could the faculty and staff experience pay cuts or layoffs? We've been able to go through this $868,000 reduction and have not touched one departmental budget, nor have we touched uh, any personnel. I'm Brittany Dory for HTV. That's all of our time for today. Thanks for watching HTV News. Join us next week for more local news and sports. Thank you.